Some players hold the greatest records of all time. LeBron stands alone! But there are some records no NBA player wants to be a part of. Now everyone knows that LeBron James has the record for the most points in NBA history, but did you know that he has another record that's just straight up embarrassing? Because he holds the record for the most turnovers in NBA history, and he doesn't just hold the record, he's destroying everyone. He has over 400 more turnovers than the next closest player, Karl Malone. That means throughout his 20 year NBA career, he has averaged three and a half turnovers every single game. And he doesn't look like he's slowing down anytime soon, so he'll have plenty of time to add to his record. But he may have some competition in a few years because Russell Westbrook is third in line with the most turnovers in NBA history with 4,443. And he loves to turn the ball over, averaging 3.8 turnovers every single game. However, that's not the only embarrassing record Russell Westbrook is a part of. Because on February 13th, 2017, the Thunder matched up in a regular season game against the Wizards. And starting at 328 in the second quarter, they went all the way until 6 minutes left in the third without making one shot. They missed 24 shots in a row, the most consecutive missed shots in NBA history. The only points they had were 5 free throws. The score went from 61 to 52, all the way to 91 to 57. Now Russ didn't miss all 24 by himself, but another record he does hold is he's the only player to ever shoot 11 shots in a game, miss every single one, and do it twice. Honestly, that's pretty impressive, but missing 11 shots in one game isn't the record. The most missed shots in a game without a make is held by Tim Hardaway. Tim is known for more than just his killer crossover, because on December 27th, 1991, he put his name in the record books. The Warriors were playing the Timberwolves, and throughout the game, Hardaway shot 17 times and missed all of them. He only had two points from the free throw line, but managed to rack up 13 assists, and the Warriors still won the game in overtime. And after the game, Hardaway said, I'm going to frame this box score. I had to get an NBA record somehow. I mean, at least he can always say he's in the record books, just like Jamison Curry, because he might have been the worst player in NBA history. Now, a lot of NBA players have short careers. Tyler Davis's NBA career lasted 54 seconds, Andrew Pankos was 33, and Alex Scales' NBA career only lasted 9 seconds. But Jamison Curry holds the record for the shortest career in NBA history. He was drafted with the 51st pick by the Bulls in the 2007 NBA Draft, and it took all the way until 2010 for him to finally debut in his NBA career. He signed a 10-day contract with the Los Angeles Clippers, and on January 24, 2010, with 3.9 seconds left in the game, his coach wanted to give him a shot and finally make his NBA debut. He finished his NBA career with zero points, zero rebounds, zero assists, and one game played. After the game, he said, it was the quickest four seconds ever. I wish it would have lasted longer. Being out there, I just felt like a regular person, like a regular basketball player. I felt like I was at home, like this is where I belong. The next day, he was cut from the team never managed to make his way back to the NBA, but at least he can always say he holds an NBA record. Now having the shortest career in NBA history isn't exactly something to be proud of, but neither is the record Bubba Wells set. Because on December 29th, 1997, Bubba Wells only had one job, and that was to foul Dennis Rodman as quickly and as much as possible. This was the exact day Hackashack was created. Even though it was named after Shaquille O'Neal, it started with Bubba Wells and Dennis Rodman. The Chicago Bulls were unstoppable, on their way to finish up their second three-peat, the Hardy of winning rings the last two years in a row. With Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen leading the way, the Dallas Mavericks only saw one option to stand a chance, and that was purposely fouling Dennis Rodman, who was one of the worst free throw shooters in the NBA, only making about half his free throws in his career. So the Mavericks' plan was letting Rodman shoot free throws, instead of trying to stop MJ. And that's where Bubba Wells comes in. He only played one year in the NBA, exactly 39 games. But on this night, he put himself in the record books. Every time Rodman touched the ball, Wells fouled him. Dennis is standing down here at the other end. That, that's Bubba it. Wells is going to get him, and he just fouled him. Michael goes through the lane, and the, the, the shot is blocked. And it didn't take very long until he ran out of his six fouls. Exactly two minutes and 43 seconds. He had two points and six fouls in about three minutes. And the worst part is, it didn't even work. 
Rodman made 9 out of 12 free throws, and the Mavericks still lost. But at least holding the record for fouling out the quickest isn't as embarrassing as missing the most free throws in one game. Andre Drummond is known as one of the worst free throw shooters in NBA history. In his entire career, he shot 47%, but in 2015, for the entire season, he only shot 35% from the line. That would put him second on the list for the worst free throw percentage ever in one season. And it gets even worse, because that same year, he broke the record for the most missed free throws ever in one game. The Pistons were beating the Rockets, so they pulled out the hack shack late in the second quarter, and when Drummond kept on missing, the Pistons had no other choice but to pull him out of the game. The Pistons were up by 9 going into halftime, and then to start the third quarter, the Rockets came out, forcing Drummond to keep shooting free throws. The Rockets even put in backup KJ McDaniels, just for him to foul Drummond 5 times in a row in less than 3 minutes. Andre only made 5 out of 16 free throws during that stretch, and after after only being in the game for two and a half minutes, the Pistons had to pull him out of the game again, with the lead being cut down to only one point. He sat on the bench all the way until the middle of the fourth quarter, and when he finally went back into the game, he was intentionally fouled twice in a row again and missed all four free throws. When the Pistons benched him again, he ended his career night missing 23 out of 36 free throws, breaking the NBA record for the most free throws missed in one game. It's pretty embarrassing when the other team's strategy is to make you shoot free throws, but that's exactly what happened to James Harden. Harden, except instead of forcing him to shoot free throws, the OKC Thunder forced him to shoot threes. Even though James Harden scored 29 points, every time he shot a three, it definitely wasn't going in. In fact, he only made one, even though he shot 17, breaking the NBA record for most threes missed in one game. And the worst part is, that's not even the only time he's missed 16 threes in one game. No, he's done it not once, but six different times. The only other player to miss 16 threes in one game was Damon Stoudemire, and Harden has already done it six times in his NBA career. And what's even worse is what happened to James Harden and the Rockets in 2018. Because in Game 7 against the Warriors, the Rockets had their chance to finally take down the greatest team of all time and advance to the NBA Finals. And in the biggest game of their careers, James Harden and the Rockets broke the NBA record for uh, the most missed threes in one game. To go to the NBA Finals, the Rockets missed 27 threes in a row. It started with 6 minutes and 17 seconds in the second quarter and went all the way until six and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. By the end of the game, the Rockets only made seven out of 44 threes, and James Harden only made two of his 13. During this series, James Harden also broke the record for the most missed threes in one series with 59. This included missing 22 threes in a row by himself. And as if it couldn't get any more embarrassing, the very next year, the Rockets broke the record for the most missed threes in one game. They shot 70 threes and only made 23 of them. You know it's bad when one team and player holds every embarrassing three-point record, but what might be even more embarrassing is holding the record for being on the most teams in NBA history. This is Ish Smith. He's a six-foot point guard who's averaged 7.3 points over his career, has averaged less than 20 minutes a game, and is an average three-point shooter. Even though he's a very average NBA player, he holds a record that may never be broken, and that's playing for the most teams in NBA history. There are only 30 teams in the NBA, and Ish Smith has played for 13 of them, almost half of the entire league. It took him breaking a record and 13 years to finally win an NBA championship with the Denver Nuggets. Now, Ish may have played for the most teams in NBA history, but this next NBA player holds the record for being traded the most. Trevor Ariza played in the NBA for 17 years. He averaged over 10 points per game and was one of the best defenders in the entire league. I mean, he was so good that he was traded 11 times. My guy was just getting passed around. He went from getting drafted to the Knicks to getting traded to the Magic, then the Lakers, then to the Hornets, to the Wizards, back to the Rockets, back to the Wizards again, then traded to the Blazers, then again to the Rockets, to the Pistons, then the Thunder, and ended it by getting traded to the Heat. And that's just all the times he was traded. That's not even including all the teams he signed with during free agency. By the end of his career, he was only behind Ish Smith by one, playing for 12 different NBA teams and being traded 11 times. But at least he won a championship with the Lakers in 2009. And speaking of the Lakers, one of the greatest players of all time used to play 
play for them, and he holds one of the weirdest records in NBA history. Kobe Bryant was one of the greatest players ever, and he actually holds multiple NBA records, like being the youngest player to start in an NBA game, the youngest player to ever be an NBA All-Star, and the oldest player to ever score 60 points in one game. But when you play in the NBA for as long as Kobe did, not all records will be good, just like the record he holds for missing the most shots ever in one career. Throughout his 20-year career, Kobe missed 14,481 field goals, the most ever in one career. However, LeBron is only 500 misses away, so it might not be too much longer before LeBron not only holds the record for the most turnovers ever, but also the most misses in NBA history. And LeBron and Kobe aren't the only ones missing shots, because back in 1950, the Fort Wayne Pistons and the Minneapolis Lakers played in the lowest scoring game ever. Once the game was over, they combined for a total of 37 points, and the final score was 19 to 18. But what's weird about this NBA record is what happened during the game. The Pistons had no chance against the Lakers, so their entire strategy for the game was to hold the ball as long as they could. There was no shot clock back then, so if the Pistons held the ball, the Lakers had no chance to score. And once they took the lead, the Pistons didn't let them have the ball back. Vern McKell was the game's leading scorer with 6 points. The Pistons leading scorer was John Oldham, who had 5 points. And it was after this game, the NBA knew something had to change. So 4 years later, the 24 second shot clock was introduced, making sure no team can ever hold the ball for the whole game again. But that wasn't the only embarrassing record made in the 1950s, because not only was there the lowest scoring game in NBA history, but there was also the longest game to ever be played. The Indianapolis Olympians were playing against the Rochester Royals, the final Final score was 75 to 73. However, the crazy part about this game is not only did it go into overtime, but it took six overtimes to finally have a winner. In the first four overtimes, both teams only combined for four total points. In fact, in the last overtime, the Royals didn't even score, and the Olympians only scored two points. But that was enough to finally end the longest game in NBA history. Now, we've talked about some embarrassing NBA records, but it might not get any worse than the time Tony Snell put up zero stats in an NBA game. Now, I understand if you only played for a couple minutes, but this guy played for 28 minutes and 20 seconds, and he put up zero points, zero rebounds, and zero everything. He shot the ball twice and missed them both. I mean, the only stat he had was having one foul. He was really out there just running back and forth, getting his workout in for the day. And the worst part is, that's not even the only time that's happened in the NBA, because in 2011, Joel Anthony did the same thing on the Miami Heat. He had LeBron, D-Wade, and Chris Bosh on his team, so he didn't have to do very much, but he took not doing very much to a whole nother level. He played for 29 minutes, and he didn't even shoot the ball once, but he did have one turnover and four fouls. All I'm saying is, if I played 29 minutes in an NBA game, I could do better than just straight up zeros in the stat line. And speaking of Tony Snell, even though he has one of the most embarrassing records in NBA history, he also has a record that may never be broken. Because Tony Snell hasn't missed a free throw in four years. The last time he missed a free throw was in 2019. That was back when D Wade and Dirk Nowitzki were still in the NBA. He doesn't shoot a lot of free throws. In fact, he's only made 46 of them in the last four years. But either way, it's crazy to think about the last time he missed a free throw, Kevin Durant was on the Warriors. But even the greatest player of all time has an embarrassing record. In 1990, Michael Jordan was already one of the best players in the entire league, averaging 33.6 points per game that year. He also shot 37.6% from three that season, the fourth highest in his entire career. So he decided to enter the three-point contest. He already won two dunk contests in 1987 and 1988, so it was time for MJ to test himself with the three-point contest. His teammate Craig Hodges joined him, and they actually shot against each other in the first round. But no one realized they were about to witness history in the making. MJ's over here on the right, and as you can see, there's not a lot of shots going in. Racks, five balls on a rack. We're underway. He made five out of 33s, or just 16.67%. So much for being the greatest of all time. But someone who's really the GOAT is Don Bovin, because he holds the record for the most consecutive ejections in NBA history. Bovin was a forward who played for the Milwaukee Hawks in 1952. He played in the NBA for three seasons and averaged 9 points, 4.2 rebounds, and 2 assists per game. 
playing on three different teams. He might not have lasted very long in the NBA, but he will always hold one of the weirdest records ever. Bovin picked up six fouls in six games in a row, and back in the 1950s, the NBA was way more physical, so I can't imagine what he had to do to foul out of six games in a row. He must have been throwing a lot of elbows. And if you liked watching embarrassing NBA records, you'll love watching players getting caught cheating in the NBA. Go check it out right now.